Hi everybody, my name is John. Welcome to Hascasts, helping you into the world of home automation one step at a time. What we're going to do in this series of videos is we're going to introduce you to the world of home automation through Home Assistant or Has.io. We're going to install it on a virtual machine, that way you can try it out for free, uh, which means you don't have to buy a Raspberry Pi for $30, £35, pounds, whatever it is in uh, in your country, uh, just to install it. This is a, a simple way. I'm going to show you all the, all the simple ways of doing things so that you don't have to go into any command lines or terminals. Uh, and I'm going to keep the, the commands that you have to type to a minimum. What you will notice is that if there are any commands that need typing, then what I will do is I will... Uh, list those out in the video notes below so and I'll and I'll also let you know when I'm doing that just so that you can have a look at there anytime I'll also try and put some time codes up which will help you navigate the video okay let's begin <laughs> Okay, so in the first video, we're going to install has.io on a virtual machine. Our first step is to open up a web browser. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to download the server version of Ubuntu. So if you uh, go into your favorite search engine, probably Google, uh, type in Ubuntu server and it is the one that says download Ubuntu server. So if we click on that, it will bring up the the last version which is 17.10.1. So if we download that, so that will download onto our system. Uh, obviously I have downloaded it before in preparation for this for this video so while that's downloading as you can see uh, the server edition is about 7, 754 megabytes if we were doing the desktop edition for a start it would need more memory and more RAM it would be a lot bigger on the file system it would require a bigger uh, dynamic hard drive and we're not going to need a, um, a UI, we're not going to need a graphical user interface for Ubuntu itself because we are going to be doing everything through has.io. Right, so what I will do is I will get onto the, the next piece of software which is Oracle VirtualBox. You may have this installed, you may not, so just do a uh, a quick search through your start menu, through your applications menu, whatever it is, uh, and have a look for Oracle VM VirtualBox, Oracle VirtualBox, or a VirtualBox. If you don't have it installed, then again open up a web browser, um, go into the search engine, type VirtualBox, one word, and you want Oracle VM VirtualBox. Here will be a download link for your operating system. I'm using Linux, so for me, download VirtualBox for Linux. Or you can just click on this one, and it will take you into one, into a page that gives you the option of operating systems. Now, I am using Arch Linux, which is not on here. However, I do have it installed but you can install it however you want it. So if you're on Windows, go into Windows and it will give you a, a downloadable exe file uh, and you can download and install it from there. Okay, so I'm assuming you've now installed VirtualBox. So what we're going to do we're going to open VirtualBox 
Right, so that's open. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a new virtual hard drive. I am going to call it has.io. You can call it whatever you like. Uh, the type is going to be Linux and the version on my system it's come up default. You can select it from the menu if it's not your default. Okay, click next. Uh, we are going to leave the the RAM, the memory size, at 1024 megabytes, which is uh, recommended in the instructions that I've followed in order to come up with this video. So, we are going to create a new virtual hard drive. We're going to leave it as VirtualBox Disk Image VDI. We're going to allow it to be dynamically allocated. What this means is that if our hard drive or if our has.io installation grows above the size that we've set our that we will set our hard drive, basically it will allow the hard drive to grow with it. Now we're going to leave, I'm going to uh, leave it or set it in your case to 10 gigabytes. Again, this is a figure that I haven't plucked from thin air. It's a figure that. Uh, is on one of the instruction pages that I've followed to get the quick installation going. Right, so the virtual machine is now being created. There are a few adjustments that we do need to make. If we go into settings, the first one is under storage. So under storage devices, controller IDE, if we click empty, and we are going to choose choose virtual optical disk file navigate to the one that we've downloaded the Ubuntu file and then if we go to the network tab where it says attached to NAT change that to bridged adapter and in name if you have multiple network connections on your system, it will list those and you want to select your your primary network your primary network adapter. Uh, hopefully you'll just have one and it'll be nice and easy. Okay, then click OK. Right, now we can start it. Press start. So what's happening now is uh, the What's happening now is VirtualBox has started a virtual machine and inside it is our CD that we've downloaded. Right, so this is basically asking for the language for the installation CD. We're going to select English. Now when you do that, you will probably, if it's the first time that you've used VirtualBox, you will probably get a warning saying that uh, auto capture or auto keyboard or something 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 along those lines and basically what it means is that once you click inside it or once you ta start typing inside it it may be that it steals the focus of your keyboard or your mouse and you can't get it back so you won't be able to move outside these borders or you won't be able to say alt and tab out of it into different windows. Uh, the simple thing to do is click what I believe they call the home key uh, and for me it is the right control key which is the the home key or whatever they call it and then whatever you want so I can do right control and F which will bring it full screen uh, things like that. Right so yeah and as I speak I haven't got my mouse. So if I press the right control key and I'll get my mouse back. However, I do want to click inside the virtual machine and I'm going to select the first entry which is install Ubuntu server. It will now boot from the CD and it will ask me which language yeah, which language do I want to install in. I want to install English. I am in the United Kingdom. Right now, this is uh, this may be different uh, for you and for for everybody. 
we're going to detect the keyboard layout. So we're going to uh, click the left arrow to yes. What it's going to do is it's going to ask you to press certain keys and from there it will be able to uh, narrow down which keyboard you've got. So press one of these keys. I'll press my Y, W and then it's got a fair idea of what keyboard I've got now so it's just asking me if I've got these keys. No I haven't, no I haven't, no, 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 yes. I do have a pound, or as you Yanks call it, a, well, I don't, don't know what you call it. Okay, yes, uh, do I have a GB keyboard? Uh, it appears just, no, just there. Okay, right, so now it's going to go through and detect the hardware. I'm just going to have a look on my list to see where we are. Uh, so next setup keyboard, we're going, it's going to ask me for a host name. Uh, I'll come back to you when it does that. And we're back. Okay, host name. I'm going to call my host name has.io. Uh, a full name for the new user. Call it whatever you want. You can put your full name in there if you want. I'm going to put Home Assistant. Right, so username and password. Uh, so basically, in the setup instructions that are in the setup instructions that are provided in the has.io uh, documentation, mm -hmm. the password and username that he uses are H A for both. So. I'm going to do the same just in case there are some uh, intricacies further down in the code uh, because it does state that if you use it in a virtual, uh, if you install it in an alternative way, uh, there may be add ons that don't work because uh, the prerequisites are not there and things like that. So, what I've done is I've gone uh, the route of not least resistance, but the root that will hopefully uh, minimize and negate uh, any or hopefully all of those problems. Right, so here I'm just selecting show password in clear. That uh, means I can show my password in clear. Continue. I can now type HA. I don't need to show it in clear. Otherwise, it would just fail because they don't match. Yes, I know it's a weak password. I want to continue. I do not want to encrypt my home drive. Based on physical location, your time zone is Europe, London. Yes, it is. If I'm going too fast for you, then feel free to pause the video at any time and, and do it that way. Right, so I want to use the entire disk, so the top option. Yep, yeah, it's only got one hard drive, which is the one that we gave it. Uh, yes, I want to write these changes to disk. Right, so it's now going to install all the system. I am going to have a drink of tea. Charles. Notice, notice I am not posh. My little finger is down like this. And my cup is hot. Right, so while well, that is installing, it's not doing bad though. I'm going to carry on reading my book. Right, so it's now asking if we want to use a proxy. We don't. So, continue. More installations. Let's have a look on my list to see where we are. Proxy, yeah. Automatic security updates. So it's going to ask us uh, when we want to update it, whether we want to update it always manually or allow automatic security updates. Or a third option, I can't remember what it is. Um, we are going to choose, well I am going to choose automatic security updates. That way if, that, if there are any... So we've got no automatic updates, install security updates automatically. That is the one that I'm going to choose. That way, if there are any bug fixes or any uh, zero-day hacks come out, uh, then hopefully they will get pushed and 
installed before anybody can get into this server mind you with the password HA it isn't going to take one to, to crack is it right besides that where are we right okay so do we want to install any servers yes we do I want to install no do we want to install any servers no we don't um, if I was keeping this installation and if it was uh, just me I would probably install open SSH maybe Samba um, I think that's it but anyway we're not going to install we are not going to install any servers we're going to continue so the next thing it's going to do is it's going to ask me if I want to install uh, the bootloader to the master boot record uh, the bootloader is called grub and if we had a multi-boot system so if we had Linux and say Windows running side by side on a computer uh, when we started the computer up it would give us the choice do you want to run Linux or do you want to run Windows however as we're just running Linux it's nice and simple we're not even going to be uh, looking at it when it starts so it doesn't matter uh, so as we can see 47% I'll come back to you in a minute <coughs> right so it's now installing grub when it comes up and asks us if we want to install it to the master boot record the answer is yes we do we would like it to install to the master boot record record thank you yes install the grub bootloader to the master boot record yes thank you very much for asking yes we do want to okay so it's installing that once it's done that it will let us know that we can now reboot the system and boot into uh, boot into our virtual machine uh, right so a a quick note on that uh, we don't need to go back into the settings and excuse me we don't need to go back into the settings and take the CD out that we put in the the disk that we downloaded uh, it will do that automatically which is pretty awesome really okay We'll be quiet for five minutes. Right, okay, so installation is complete. Continue. Thank you. Okay, so it's now rebooting itself. This is Grub. Or should I say that is Grub. Right, so it's now starting up. It will go to the login screen. Here we go. And once it goes to the to the login screen, we can log in with our user, which is username ha password ha. Okay, login username password ha. Right, and what we're going to do is we are going to curl, which means we're going to grab a file from the internet, lowercase s, uppercase l, and this address over here. So that's g double dot g l slash G O uppercase R figure two uppercase H uppercase T space pipe. If you don't know what pipe is, it is a short character. It's a uh, long, thin character. It's a bit like a uh, an uppercase I, but like a capital I. 
excuse me, right, on the British keyboard it is, uh, well mine is between my left shift and Z. I believe the American keyboard is somewhere across the right hand side of the P in that area. I could be wrong. Okay, right, so, and we're going to space, pass that to bash, which is the uh, the program that executes all the commands and the dash means execute this. So what this is doing, curl is downloading the file, uh, the S switch, uh, the S parameter means don't give me a load of garbage, just show me the important stuff. So if move it about a lot. And the uppercase L means instead of downloading the document that's here, because this is just a shortcut, what I want you to do is I want you to go to this address, the Google address, and follow it through until you find the document at the end, which is this one. So this is what it will download and then it will pass it on to it will pass it on to bash and bash will execute all those commands from there. Right, are we ready? First it will give you your IP address. Your IP address is for me it is 192.168.0.52 but that's just me. Yours will more than likely be different. It asks, it asks for our password, HA, right, and now we just leave it to it, um, it'll take maybe a few minutes and it will install, well, if we look over here, it grabs our IP address, uh, it tells us what the IP address is, it updates the system so that, uh, so that it is installing all the latest versions, it then installs all the software that we need in order to install Docker. So with, don't ask what Docker is if you don't know, just uh, just accept that we need it. Okay, so it grabs the GPG key for Docker and it adds it to our system. That basically uh, ensures That basically ensures that uh, it. That basically ensures that it is from uh, the Docker people. Okay, yep. Make sure that we've got the right one, and then it adds the Docker repository to our system, uh, which is a bit like saying, "Yep, have a look in here. You'll find loads of Docker software." Updates the system again so that it pulls all that software in. And then it says, oh yeah, I see it. Now I want to install Docker. So it installs it. And then it goes to a different script, which is, again, is the same. Uh, curl SL pulls all the text in, passes it onto bash and executes it as root. Okay. And then once it's done all that, it will then come here and say success go to your IP address colon 8123 like that so success go to HTTP 192.168.052 colon 8123 if we open up a new tab in our browser remember yours will be different 192.168.0.52 colon slash uh, colon 8123, which is the default port for Home Assistant. Press Enter. And da da! At last. Sorry, I've been trying to, um, I've been trying to tweak that uh, install script for the past, uh, at least for the past hour of camera. Right, so now it's preparing uh, Home Assistant. So this basically means that it is downloading um, all the, all the, as far as I'm aware, it's downloading all the internal dependencies that it needs. Um, it's it's downloading all the internal dependencies that it needs. 
I apologize if you can hear my dog snoring. Yeah, it is. Um, I know on my system, last time I installed it, it didn't take 20 minutes. I assume this uh, this can take up to 20 minutes applies if you have a um, if you have a slow internet connection. Uh, like I said, for myself, I think it took maybe five minutes. Uh, but then what it does is it transfers you, it restarts itself once it's done all the preparing um, and it transfers you onto the uh, just the home assistant home screen um, and there we can go on and configure it in more detail in the next video as it happens I will be doing that video straight after this however it's going to be a lot uh, to fit in so that is why I'm just um, not condensing the videos but I'm just making sure the videos are just in uh, sizable chunks so we'll do the configuring after this video and then after that video we'll move on to installing the essential add-ons and uh, and things like that and getting into the fun stuff uh, I think if I remember correctly because I'm redoing these videos because the the original ones that I did um, they were just with my webcam mic and I didn't have a proper mic and so they they sounded terrible uh, I didn't have m many issues with them but some some users did uh, so I'm I'm redoing them and as it happens I've learned uh, I have learned a few things and uh, I think the videos are are better so anyway I was just going to say um, I will come back to you once it's up and running. However, it is up and running. So what is happening now is it's done all the preparing that it needs to do. Um, it's just restarting itself and in 10 seconds maybe, I'll try and restart it. Okay, I'm a bit impatient. I will try and restart it. So if I refresh the page... we have home assistant okay so it comes auto it comes uh, automatically configured with a um, a discovery a discovery component uh, slash script and it can discover certain items on your network if you've already got these items running so for myself I have a, a Philips Hue system uh, and I can configure that and the Plex media server I can configure that and here I have all the important stuff and this is what we will be working on in the near future a big long list of components for us to go through and in the next episode in this series we will be going through the configuration uh, Right, okay, so it's probably been a long video, maybe 30, 40 minutes or so. Uh, so I thank you. If you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up below. Um, if you want to see when the next video comes out, it's going to take me a bit of time to edit them. Uh, then don't forget to subscribe. All the links and everything else that you need is in the description below the video. Uh, obviously, if you're watching from outside YouTube, you'll have to click in. Okay, thank you very much. I look forward to the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.